Hello everybody, welcome to my Daredevil review. Uh, before we get into it, I want to let all of you know that Epic History X-Men Volume 1 is now for free on YouTube. It's over an hour long. Uh, it's our documentary uh, all about Marvel's mutants, the X-Men, my favorite fucking mutants. And it's amazing. It's like a history lesson. Everything like you need to know from 1963 to 1975. You know what I'm saying? It's badass. So go check it out. I'm so proud of it. It's our finest work to date. And also be on the lookout for Epic History X-Men Volume 2 coming soon to Vimeo On Demand in July. Uh, so be on the lookout. So yeah, let's get into Daredevil on Netflix. Okay, so this is Netflix's first superhero show. As we all know, Netflix is now just getting into the original content game. They've been putting out a lot more original content, uh, which is exciting. I'm really excited to see somebody besides television putting content out there. It gives me hope for the future. I love Netflix. I'm a huge supporter of theirs. I've, I, I sold Netflix to people when it first came out at like Sunco's video when I was like in high school. So, I mean, if that gives you any indication, I'm like totally on team Netflix. Before we get into specifics, let me give you my overview of how I felt about it. Uh, like I said, I was really, I was kind of surprised at how much I liked it. And I was surprised with like how much uh, the people kind of cared about the original material. I feel like they really give a shit. And that's what I love about this show is like the people who are making it really are taking things from the comic books and putting them in into the show in really great ways. And they're not like bastardizing stuff. I don't see a bunch of heretical stuff. Uh, you know, I haven't read a ton of Daredevil. I've read a little bit of Daredevil, some stuff from the 80s. I have this... David Mazzucchelli Kelly Daredevil Reborn Artist Edition, which is like, the art in this is just crazy. Like every time I crack this book open, I just get mesmerized by it. And I like end up looking at it for like an hour, um, which is, and it's an amazing story too. Uh, it's totally amazing. Like Frank Miller, it's like so awesome. Um, so yeah, they really, I feel like they've really like done the like stuff that's in the comic books. They really tried to go with that more 80s tone of like the darker, grittier, uh, you know, fucking people like getting shot in the face type of stuff, you know, going on. There's a lot of ultra violence that they're carrying over from the more serious Daredevil stuff from the 80s that I, I really enjoy. Um, and yeah, I just, I really think that they're doing a great service to this character. Uh, another thing that I love about the series of Daredevil is, and the character of Daredevil is that he is a smaller character who has a smaller story. Like, he's not going around saving the world, you know? He's not on the Avengers, you know? I mean, not to say that, well, I think he may have been on the Avengers, but let's, 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 just Daredevil is just kind of, he hangs out in Hell's Kitchen and that's his deal, you know? Like, he, that's his whole thing. And I love seeing a smaller superhero story. Like, I really enjoy seeing a smaller superhero story where they're not having to save the world. It's just like him versus this other mob dude and they're just like having to figure it out and they're having to punch the shit out of each other and stab each other and just get down and dirty. So, um, man, I was really surprised by how good this series was. Uh, it, it took me a while to kind of warm up to it, but once it got going, I mean, it, it really hooked me. It really hooked me. I was really surprised at how much it hooked me, to be honest. Um, and I was just really surprised by a lot of things in this show. Uh, in my opinion, I feel like Daredevil is the best superhero TV show that I've seen so far. Uh, I haven't watched, I mean, I, I dropped off of Agents, everyone says Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. gets better. I don't know, that first few episodes are so bad, I just can't, so sorry. Um, I love the R-rated violence in this show. I really wish we'd see more superhero stuff that has more just straight up violence in it. Because that's the whole thing about like superheroes is like, they fight and it's really intense and it was really great to see some intense fights that are just like holy shit you just got stabbed and it's uncensored it's not on tv so they can do fun stuff that they can't do on nbc the fight choreography is great uh really well done it like better fight choreography than i've seen in some movies okay like it's really well done um and yeah this this like i said this show was was uh, a little bit of a surprise to me when i first Watched the first few episodes. I had a really hard time getting into it, uh, you know, getting into the characters, mainly because of Karen and Foggy. But I'll get I'll get into that later. And it took me a while to kind of get used to the the actor who was playing Matt Murdock. But by the end of it, I totally accepted him. Um, but at the beginning, I kind of had some maybe it's a personal problem. I don't know. But as soon as Vincent D'Onofrio got on screen as the kingpin, Wilson Fisk. I mean, it was like I'm all in. I fucking love the Kingpin. I love Vincent D'Onofrio. I'm a big fan of Vincent D'Onofrio. Um, uh, 
uh, I've, I've said it before, I'll, you know, say it again. It's like, oh, you know, being Thor in Adventures of Babysitting when I was a kid was like, oh my gosh, he's so awesome. And then The Cell. Uh, I love that movie. He was so cool in The Cell. And then also uh, Criminal Intent. I was like a huge Criminal Intent person for a while there. Uh, so like, I loved him in that. So when I heard that he was playing the Kingpin and that he was cast, I was like, fuck yes. Because I knew, I knew that he was going to hit it out of the park. Okay, I knew that Vincent D'Onofrio was the perfect guy for this, and he did. He nailed it. I love the way he played this role. Uh, I just, I can't tell you how much I fucking loved him in this role, man. It's just phenomenal. Tour de force performance. Uh, I love his cadence of how, you know, the, the way he talks and you know it's just like it's so good the, the the odd mannerisms and cadences of his speech especially when you see Jurassic Park and you see Vince D'Onofrio or uh, Jurassic World and you see Jura Vince D'Onofrio's Hoskins and it's totally different people like he's such a great actor um but yeah like I read an article actually in fact where somebody was theorizing that the kingpin may be like a high functioning autistic person and, and I love that idea. Like, I love the idea of the kingpin being this high-functioning autistic kid who's just, like, fucked up in the, in, in the state of arrested development after, like, killing his father, you know? when That moment where you see him and he's getting dressed in his apartment and then he looks in the mirror and he sees himself as a young boy, like, you know, covered in blood. Like, he's just never gotten past that. Uh, that was just so great. Uh, you know, his... The, the painting... Fuck you, the painting was so good where he buys that white painting. And, like, it, it's so great because, like, how they lead you into to, to this painting. Um, so you see him. He's at this gallery. He's talking to Vanessa. Oh, my God, Vanessa. Great actress. Great casting. Love her. Uh, Wilson and Vanessa forever. I was so a part of their high romance fucking plot line. I was, like, all in on that. Um, but, you know, you see this stupid white painting, you know, and you see this, this kind of crap all the time. And you're like, that's not art. You know, that's just some white crap on a, on a thing, you know, and on a canvas. And when they're talking about it, like, it's really great. Like, the way they talk about it and how it makes them feel and all this stuff. And then later on, you know, when you finally see Wilson as a child and you see him snapping and killing his dad to, like, save his mom and how she's holding him afterwards and he's looking at the wall and how the wall looks like that fucking painting. Like, God damn it, that was such good writing. That was so good. I was, loved it. And then in the very, very end when he's in the, in the prison, he's been uh, captured and he's looking at the wall, and the wall looks like that, that painting, and that, I just, ah, oh, that was just so beautifully written, um, and like I said, yeah, I loved Vanessa, uh, I love seeing them get together, so fantastic, in fact, honestly, I'm on Team Kingpin, like, I'm totally, like, that's what I got emotionally invested in the story, is like, I'm like, I want to know more about him, what he's doing, what his real plans are, because that's another thing in the show, is they're like, you know, oh, he's trying to do this. But nobody really knows exactly what he's trying to do exactly. Like, it's never been just completely stated. So it's like, I don't know. I want to know more about what his ultimate goal is. I want to know what happened to him after he... And I'm sure we're going to find these things out in season two and whatever. Um, but what happened when he went to that farm and, and how he came from nothing and how he has all this stuff now? Like, I really... I just... I'm so interested in fucking Kingpin. Like, I'm so interested in Wilson Fisk. I want to know everything about him. Uh, I loved his boy Wesley. I love, I love him and Wesley in their in their bro relationship. Uh, that was just like the best. I was really upset. Uh, by the way, this is a spoiler full thing if you haven't noticed, but I was really upset when Karen kills Wesley. I was like, oh my god. So all right, let's let's talk about like Karen for for just a hot minute. Um, Karen is, is played by the chick who pl played Jessica in True Blood, and I loved her character in True Blood. Um, but man, I just, I don't like her casting. I don't, I don't love the character of Karen Page. I know that, and I also know that I'm not necessarily supposed to. And, you know, I, I do understand if any of you guys out there are comic book fans and you've read any of the Daredevil stuff, you know, Daredevil Born Again, Karen plays a big role in this storyline. And I think that if they end up doing this storyline, like, that would be such a huge payoff. Like, that would be so dope to, to see that, that character arc for Karen's story. But at the same time, her character is so annoying in season one that I just want to see Wilson Fisk choke the life out of her, okay? Choke the life out of her. Because the problem with her character is that she doesn't know what's going on. You know, she's in the dark the whole time. And so she's going around doing all this 
do good or bullshit without really knowing what's happening and through her ignorance is getting innocent people killed. You know, like Karen is responsible for the death of Ben Ulrich, the reporter. She's tricked him into going to see Kingpin's mom. I mean, like, what a bitch, you know, like that's on her, you know, and like, and that's what's like kind of not gratifying. That's, you know, like I said, these are some of my only criticisms on Daredevil is like, she should pay for that, you know? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't I don't think of her as a good person after that. Like, I was like, wow, you got this man killed. And what is this lady supposed to do? Well, I guess she's his, Ben's ex-wife now has all the insurance money or whatever. But still. And then also, they, she got Mrs. Cardenas killed. Her and Foggy got Mrs. Cardenas killed. Uh, which was just like, uh, like, you guys, like, tell her to take that 20 grand and go, you know? Like, uh, I do not get it. Um, and same thing with Foggy, you know, I, I felt like he had a similar thing where he didn't know what's going on necessarily and he's doing do-gooder stuff. It's very similar and just like, I don't know if it's the director, I don't know if it's the actor, you know, it's just not working for me. You know, Foggy's just not working for me. I would, I would love to see Karen and Foggy recast. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe not. I don't know. But the, I know that he's supposed to be kind of comedic relief, but like I said, it's just not working for me. Um, let's go back to, uh, the other big issue that I had uh, is Mrs. Cardenas. So you have this character throughout, uh, and she is a she's an older woman. She's you know an elderly woman who's living in this kind of slum lord place or whatever, and she doesn't want to leave. Like she doesn't want to leave. And it, this is the thing that I don't get is like, okay, I understand that she's probably really low income. I get that. I get that moving is really expensive. You know, I get that. Uh, and that she doesn't have family or anywhere to go. Okay, I'm, w I'm totally with you. But at the same time, this tenement that she's living in is a shithole, okay? She's living in a shithole that people are trying to tear down so they can build something that isn't a shithole, okay? That doesn't have a bunch of people de dealing drugs out of it and, and doing whatever, God knows whatever, you know? It's like, so... And this is another thing. It's like, she doesn't own the building. Like, when you rent an apartment... You don't own it. Like, it's not your right to say, fuck you, I'm not leaving. Like, I was so not on her on her side at all. And it's like, and then the fact that, like, she doesn't have electricity. She doesn't have water. They came in, they fucked up her walls. They offered her 10 grand. She still wouldn't move. And then they doubled down on her and they offer her 20 grand. She's like, no, I'm going to fight. You know, it's just like, fuck you. Take the money and move, you bitch. And that's why I hate Karen and Foggy and Mrs. Carnitas. Those, those fucking guys killed me. But, um... Moving on, moving on from them. Uh, let's get back into some stuff that I was really excited about. Uh, so let's see here. I really enjoyed that they put Claire in there, uh, Rosario Dawson's character. In the comic books, she's known as the Night Nurse, which I'm so excited to see the fucking Night Nurse because like, I love the concept of the Night Nurse, which is uh, in the comic books, there is a woman who patches up uh, super villains, superheroes, uh, mobsters, whoever, like just people who are doing unsanctioned shit and they can't go to hospitals, she will patch you up. Whether you're a good guy or a bad guy, it doesn't matter. She doesn't care. All she does is she's there to help patch people up after their battles. And another thing that I love about this series is seeing a, you know, a successful superhero serial show because the thing is, is comic books are serials. You know, you have issues that come out. And so I think that superheroes are really translatable to the television, you know? I mean, as long as, I mean, obviously some are harder to do than others, but I, I think that they really captured the serial version of a superhero, like from the comics to a show. And I, I mean, I'm really excited to see what they do with their other shows now. Like I'm excited to see their Luke Cage show. I'm excited to see the, the Jessica Jones stuff. And I hope that they all cross paths and you know that they will because um, Luke Cage is also like in um, New York. That's, you know, his whole stomping grounds thing. And Luke Cage is also a smaller character like Daredevil, you know, so it would make sense for them to like hang out and like beat people up and stuff. Uh, and I have looked a little bit onto what's going on with season two of Daredevil because I am excited about season two and I am wondering who... Uh, what characters we might be able to see. And I know that they've cast the Punisher. So I'm so excited to see the Punisher in season two. I fucking can't wait. That guy is crazy, okay? Frank Castle, the Punisher, if you don't know who he is. He's like Daredevil in the fact that, you know, he goes around and he does like this vigilante stuff. Except 
he doesn't have any heightened senses or anything and he just murders people with guns you know like he just like like you know how daredevil's just struggling with this not murdering people thing he doesn't have that struggle okay he's going he knows he's going to hell and he wants to take as many people with him so it'll be really fun to see daredevil dealing with the Punisher, because also the Punisher's on Daredevil's side. Like, that's what's going to be so interesting about it is like, they kind of are on the same side, but they don't agree with each other's methods, you know? So that'll be really interesting to see the Punisher next season. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and I, I did love in this show that they also have tons of Easter eggs, tons of Easter eggs all over the place, tons of like smaller characters, uh, such as like Father Lantern. Uh, and Ben Ulrich, those are like smaller characters from the comic books that they, they don't have to put them in there, but they do. And I'm glad that they do, um, especially like uh, the Easter egg. I, I will say this one Easter egg got me real excited, real, real excited was uh, when Foggy was talking to Karen about Matt and how he dated a dated a, a, a Greek girl in college or something. And I was just like, oh, Electra, like I got so like. I will fucking die when Elektra shows up. Like, I love Elektra. I really love Elektra. She's such a badass fucking character. And that bullshit Jennifer Garner crap just makes me sick. So I just can't wait to see an awesome Elektra. And I believe that this show will really deliver what I'm looking for. Uh, finally, I'll finally get to see what I want to see, you know? Because uh, she's the shit. Oh, yeah, and the Iron Fist, they're also going to have an Iron Fist show, which uh, totally works, too. The Iron Fist, like, he's totally a smaller character with kind of smaller powers. Uh, and, and also, they kind of teased the Iron Fist situation. Uh, so you have Madame Gao and her heroin trade, and the little symbol that's, like, on the little heroin packet is a symbol of, uh, that's on the chest of one of Iron Fist's, like, villains or whatever. So it's like, and also... There's, uh, they do drop kind of a reference where Madame Gao is leaving and she's telling Leland, you know, oh, I'm leaving, I'm going back home. And he's like, going home to China? And she's like, oh, it's much further than that, you know? <laughs> like it's further. And what I took that to mean, especially seeing the little symbols on her packets and also seeing the fact that she has some sort of mystical powers because she hit Daredevil really friggin' hard with her chi or something, makes me think that she is from Kunlun. And if you don't know, Kunlun is a mystical city, kind of in a pocket dimension or something. It's weird. It's somewhere kind of in the Himalayas. Um, there was like a, it's really hard to explain. It's really convoluted, so I'm not going to. Um, but it's a mystical, crazy city in the east that you can only get through a dimension. And that's where the Iron Fist powers come from. Uh, there's dragons there, too. There's some alien stuff involved. There's like an sh alien ship that crashed. Like I said, it's really convoluted. I don't have time to go into all of it. But... Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing to seeing all these different uh, characters interact and having them cross over. And then they're they're you know you know they're going to cross over in the Defenders show that they're planning. We'll see how it goes. You know, I'm more of the mind of like let's just see how these go first, and then we'll start doing team up shows. But whatever, I don't know. Maybe the Defenders will be something completely different because there's been a lot of different people who've been on the Defenders, but Iron Fist and like Luke Cage and stuff they've totally been on there. So you think it's going to be them? I really liked how Ben Ulrich was portrayed. He was uh, that, you know, I am just got to get to the truth reporter guy. Uh, although it was sad to see him straight up get murdered because that totally should have been uh, Karen Page at his place. I, I hated to see him die instead of Karen. Another aspect of the show that I really enjoyed is showing the man at the top and how hard it is to be the man at the top, you know, because you have... Karen and Matt and Foggy, and they're at the bottom, all right? They're like bottom feeders. They have this shitty office. They don't have no connections, nothing. And they're like, oh, man, it must be so great to be this kingpin guy because he gets whatever he wants, and his life is probably so great or whatever, you know? And then it shows him, and uh, I love the, the line. I don't know if it was Leland or Gal, but someone says, you know, the, the closer you get to the top, the harder the wind blows, you know? It's like the, the more money, more problems. And I think that... You know, at the end of the day, Kingpin, his problems are way crazier than Matt's problems. You know, I, I, he's got a lot of stuff to worry about, like, all the time. Like, Matt, Matt barely even worries about his own law practice. You know, the Kingpin's worrying about, like, keeping three major uh, crime syndicates, you know, in order, as well as trying to take over bit by bit an entire neighborhood, while also romancing a woman that he's fallen in love with. And I loved when the Kingpin outed himself, when he knows that he's getting ready to get outed, so he just does it himself, you know? Like, I love that. I thought that was a brilliant move. That was so funny. 
Um, I was not expecting that at all, and I thought it was fantastic. You know, and then another thing that was just so badass is like, so you see the kingpin this whole time, and like you see him, he starts off as this shadow. You know, he starts off as a shadow. Nobody knows who he is. Nobody even knows his name, you know? And then he has to out himself on television and make himself look like this good guy, you know, the savior of the city, and he's got to do these little, little pantomimes for everybody. And then at the very end, uh, you see him go full villain eventually. And that was like the best when he finally gets captured and you think that he's going to go, but then like he's got the SWAT team that's, that he's paid off and they come bust him out and he's just like walking like it ain't no thing to the car, you know, busting out. Oh, uh, so cool. And then he got snatched again, which totally sucked. But, uh, but I loved that sequence where he finally takes the gloves off and he's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just a villain. I'm a fucking villain. And, it and then now he's in jail. So now you know that like since, since uh, Nobu and Gao are out and Leland, who knows what his deal is. It's like you know that it's going to be so much fun to see how Kingpin gets out of jail um, and how he gets out of court or whatever. Whatever he's going to have to do. Whether he goes through the legal system or whether he just busts out. I don't know. But it'll be fun to kind of finally see him take his rightful place as the kingpin, where he's like, I don't, I don't work with the Russians. I'm, I am, I am the crime syndicate. You know. Another thing that I love about this show is the fact that even though it's a superhero show that's supposed to be kind of a more fantasy situation, they're showing like the realities of corruption in like government and law enforcement and all this stuff through the kingpin. It's like the way that he controls everything where he controls the crime lords through this means, and then he buys out the police, and then he has a senator in his pocket, and he's got these dudes over here running his drugs, and these guys doing shipments of bodies. Like, that's how that shit really works. Like, this is how people really work, and this is how people really operate. And I'm sure that there are tons of senators who get in the game just so they can get bought out by people so they can get a bunch of money for themselves, you know? I mean, that's just... Okay. Politicians, that's how it works, all right? Politics, you don't get into politics to make a difference. I believe most people get into politics because they want to be bought out and have a shit ton of money um, because it's just inherently a corrupt system at this point. It just needs to be fucking redone. We just need to burn it with fire and start over. So yeah, I, I really, I loved that, that aspect of the show. I thought that that was a really fantastic way to ground, you know, to ground a superhero show, because superhero shows can get really fucking silly really fucking quick, all right? This shit can get really goofy, all right? And it does a lot. In fact, if you watch most of the other superhero shows, they're all pretty fucking goofy. Um, but this one, you know, they really go the extra mile to ground it with all this realism, and it totally works. So let's back up to Karen killing Wesley, all right? So as I stated earlier, uh, I believe that Karen is super ignorant and lame, and she's like, to me, she's the most useless character in the show. Like, she's super useless. And she, when she kills Wesley, who has shown himself to be the most useful character in the whole show, who's like totally has, uh, you know, Wilson's back at all times, you know, I mean, he's just got loyalty and he's a fucking rad dude and he knows how to handle business and he's killed by stupid Karen Page, man. I was so mad. Mad, man, I really want Wilson to find out, like, that Karen did it, and I want her to find out. Oh, I want to see him kill her so bad, but whatever. I'd like to, and, and you know what would be great, actually? Better than him choking the life out of her, it, you know? I'd like to see him smash her in that car door again, man. That scene was fantastic. I can't, again, back to Wilson. I'm going to just keep skipping back to that asshole because he's just my total favorite. When that Russian ruined his first date with Vanessa, I was like, what is this guy thinking? And when Wilson smashes his head in the car door, it was just brilliant. I just loved it. I was like, God, I wish I could smash people's heads in car doors like that. That's so pimping. Uh, I loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Since we've talked about Kingpin a bunch, let's, let's switch tracks. Let's go back to Matt. Let's talk to Matt Murdock. Uh, one thing that was really great about the show is how they slowly kind of introduce you to his powers. Um, that was one thing that was, that was really fantastic in my opinion. They don't just like, and they don't make his powers ridiculous. Like they make them, like I like the way that they're showing how they're, how he's using them in the show and how like you slowly learn like more and more about them. Uh, that's fantastic. Um, you know, as you know, he got this crazy chemical splash in his eyes and somehow it heightened all of his other senses. Uh, he was trained by Stick. I love seeing Stick. 
Uh, I love the flashbacks to seeing him training and all that stuff. Because that was one thing in the show where you're like, wait, how is he such a badass? You know, it's like, I know this dad's a boxer. And that was a really great scene, too, seeing the boxing and his dad dying and all that stuff and going down in the fight or not going down. So it's like, okay, so you get that he's really tough. He got those genetics from his dad. You get that he has heightened senses to a degree. But it's like, but where did he get all this crazy training, parkour training from? And then you find out later that it's stick. That guy, I loved his, his, uh, his whole deal. I loved his surliness um stick was was awesome more stick please i want to know more about that black sky situation because that's not something that's in the comic books and i'm like deathly curious about it but there's like i, I looked online there's like nothing for me uh, about the black sky i really loved stick's philosophies about how comfort is tantamount to death uh, that is something that paul atreides also teaches so uh yeah i thought that was really great hearing him be like you know what you know when these when he's Talking to, to Matt in his apartment, and he's like, oh, you have silk sheets. And then Matt's like, because cotton feels like sandpaper on my skin. And then he's like, well, then maybe you should be sleeping on sandpaper, because the only way to get over it is to just do it all the time. Like, I love this guy's philosophies of just, like, being a badass and just, like, fuck you, you know? Like, I don't care about your whiny, you want a daddy, and I don't care that you whine it not to hurt when you're sleeping on your sheets. <laughs> I'm not surprised that Stick secretly kept the bracelet that Matt gave him. I'm not surprised. Because it's like, come on. Like, you know, he was a father figure. It's like, oh, he acts like, oh, how dare you, kid, for thinking of me as a father figure when I swoop in and fucking take the place of your father, essentially. But whatever. You know that Stick really loves Matt, but that... But he knows that that love is going to get both of them in trouble and possibly killed. And that's why he has to leave. Because he's, he's looking for a soldier. Like, he's not looking for a son. He's looking for a soldier for his, like, crazy ninja stuff. The one thing that I really realized about Matt Murdock watching this show was that him and Scott Summers totally need to, like, be super bros and just have a lot of beers together. Because those guys have so many fucking character similarities, like, personality similarities. Like... It's, it's, I never realized that. Like, for some reason, that never clicked, that connection never happened. And this show really showed me that because, you know, Matt's just so obsessed with, like, his work, you know, and his real work, not his lawyer work, his, his daredevil work. You know, he's so obsessed with it and he really wants to make a difference, you know, but it's like at the same time, it's just like, I don't know. He doesn't, he's not always doing it the right way, you know, he's, he's overly serious about certain things. He doesn't know how to have a good time, you know. I mean, he's just, they've got a lot of similarities um, that I enjoyed. And the whole thing, too, I was like, Matt, how are you getting any work done? Like, you're the worst lawyer in the world. Like, getting your ass handed to you every fucking night, and then you got to go into work. And I mean, I know that, like, they play up the fact that he's late every day. But it's like, dude, if I got beat up like that, I would not be showing up to work the next day, man. Ugh, that was, that was ridiculous. Like, the punishment. The, I was really surprised at the sheer amount of punishment that Daredevil takes in this in this show. Um, it's ridiculous. I did like that they started with the costume with the black mask and he's just wearing the black on because that is from the comic books. When he starts out, he does just wear the black mask and everything. Um, and I really enjoyed uh, the Melvin Potter sequences where he finally finds the guy who's making uh, Fisk's suits, you know, that are like, you can't shoot through them and you know, they got all special fabrics. And he fights Melvin Potter for a minute, and then he just finds out that the guy's just kind of a simpleton, uh, and he makes him a, a sweet Daredevil costume at the end. And I thought that was a really great decision to show the costume in the very last episode. Again, I love that this show isn't blowing its load, man. I mean, this show is really taking its time with you. It's not, like, pulling out all the stops to try to impress you. It's just really giving you a solid story and, and, and spoon-feeding it to you a little bit at a time. You know, I like that. Another thing that I like about uh, Matt's character is also his apartment is, like, so awesome. Like, I love the lighting and, like, the way they're, they're doing the lighting and how everything looks. In fact, actually, the whole, the whole set, all the sets look great in this show. Like, the environment is perfect. It totally looks like a shitty Hell's Kitchen situation going on. I, I, that stuff's been really great. But, yeah, at the end of the day, I really don't feel like Daredevil, for me, is about Matt Murdock. I'm, I'm definitely more interested in the Wilson Fisk side of things. Um, and I love, too, I love that they've set these two characters up in such great opposition because they both have grown up in this place. Uh, they've both seen the horrors of living in Hell's Kitchen. They both want to help 
Hell's Kitchen, but they both have completely opposite ways of doing it, which makes them opposed to one another, when in fact they should probably be allies, you know? Like, it's so interesting. Like, their, their, their philosophies are so different that it makes them enemies, when in fact their goals are very, very similar, uh, which makes for really great writing. I mean, really great tension. It's really great watching Matt struggle with the idea of killing someone, you know, where he's just like, oh, I just don't know if I can do it. And if I cross that line, I can't go back. And he's just having a really hard time with like, do I kill people? Is that a thing that I do? Is that something that I'm okay with? And then, you know, at the same time, you see the Kingpin storyline and the Kingpin saw evil when he was a child and he saw it in his own father and he was so disgusted by it that he decides to do something about it and he kills his dad. And like he makes that choice, you know, like way before Matt's even thinking about that choice, you know? So it's like, so you know that like he's all in, you know? I mean, that's like, I don't know. It's great, great writing, great writing. Also loved uh, Leland, Nobu, and Gao. I enjoyed seeing the antics of these, you know, the, the triads and, and the, you know, the Wall Street guy, criminal dude, and then the, um, Japanese guy, the Yakuza guy, which actually he isn't really Yakuza. I love that he had the red, uh, Nobu had the red ninja uniform on. And uh, he, if you didn't know, the red ninja uniform means that he's a part of the hand. And the hand is like this evil ninja fucking situation. Electra's got some dealings with the hand. Um, they're definitely, the hand is definitely going to play into more into Daredevil's story. So I'm really looking forward to seeing more of that. Uh, and man, it was so cool to see Nobu as a ninja and make ninjas cool again. Cause like, I've just seen so many lame ninja things, you know, like everyone like wants to put a ninja in something, but nobody ever really does it right. And I feel like this show really did it right. Like the fight with the fight between those two was just phenomenal. I can't believe that he was dragging Daredevil with that fucking hook thing, you know, and I was like, dude, and then Daredevil like was like going out fighting crime in like two nights. And I was like, you're going to kill yourself. But, uh. But yeah, that was a really fantastic fight scene. Uh, and I love that when they when he catches, even when, even when Nobu catches on fire, he's such a badass that he's like still attacking him, you know? Like that was so great. Uh, Leland, he did a great job. Leland Owlsley, uh, he is a daredevil villain, uh, although he's known as the Owl. Uh, I, I don't know if, how, how weird they're gonna, how superhero -y they're gonna go with Leland. They'll probably keep him a little bit more conservative, which is totally fine with me. Uh, and also Madame Gauche, but I really loved her character. I loved how mysterious she was. Uh, she was just a super fucking pimp, man. I mean, I loved that she had all those crazy Asian uh, dudes with blind people who blinded themselves just to be in her service, you know? She's this crazy dragon lady. And I, I loved that aspect uh, of the show. I was, I was, and I loved her relationship with uh, Kingpin. I thought that they had a really interesting relationship. I always loved their scenes together. Uh, it, was, it was pretty dope pretty dope. So yeah, big ups to Netflix. I'm really excited about their cinematic universe. And the thing that I really like about the Netflix cinematic Marvel universe is, you know, it's not on something like NBC or ABC or whatever. So it's not going to be that formulaic Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. looking, sounding situation, you know, because everything that's on like network cable television is very formulaic and they all have the same feeling and the same the way they look and the way they're directed and the way the music and the cues and everything in the scripts it's just it's i like seeing this some, some somebody do something a little different uh and and you're allowed to on netflix because it's like there isn't a standard there it's brand new so it's a really exciting time so in conclusion i highly recommend watching daredevil on netflix it just keeps getting better and better and better every single episode made an improvement on the one before it uh, and I can't wait for season two. I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited about the, the, uh, the Netflix Marvel universe. Uh, I love these smaller stories and I can't wait to see uh, Iron Fist and Luke Cage Hero for Hire and Jessica Jones, you know, uh, ready to investigate. So yeah, good job Netflix, keep it up. And uh, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr for all your comic book girl 19 news and updates.